How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. With the Avengers having led the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe up until this point and then some, and then the X-Men eventually coming to the MCU, we thought it would be a cool idea to go over the arc of the two most notorious teams in the Marvel Universe and how they battled it out with each other, all because of the Phoenix. This is the story of the Avengers versus the X-Men, and it was released in Marvel Comics in the year of 2012. It all starts out with Nova flying into the Earth and crashing pretty badly and almost losing his life, but thankfully, the Avengers were there to take care of him, and before Nova passed out from his wounds, he muttered, It's coming. The team was left worried and confused by what Nova had said, and was wondering what was coming. Tony immediately checks his interstellar radar, but finds nothing, and Cap asks Thor to see if anything was following him. Meanwhile, on Utopia, where Cyclops and a squad of mutants that put the mutant race priority above all others, Cyclops is training with hope and making her work really, really hard. So hard, in fact, that in the midst of training, she's pushed to the edge, and the Phoenix powers are shown from her as she launches Cyclops through the air with a burst of Phoenix energy. Meanwhile, Captain America and Iron Man are meeting with the White House to discuss the potential threat of the Phoenix Force. In this meeting, we learn that the Phoenix Force is headed to Earth and that some of the Avengers were sent out to meet and intercept the Phoenix before it arrives to Earth and tries to latch with its host. We also learn that Iron Man set up a signal that would track any traces of the Phoenix Force across the entire Earth. So, when Hope released some of the Phoenix Force's energy hitting Cyclops, Tony was able to track her location. Now, before any of the Avengers have a battle encounter with the X-Men, Cap goes to Wolverine to discuss the Phoenix. Why might you ask? Well, this is after Jean Grey died because of the Phoenix Force, and Wolverine was so close to her, so he knew to a certain degree what the Phoenix could do to anyone and anything. Before Captain America leaves the school, he asks Wolverine if he can count on him. And I think we all kind of know what he means. Is he willing to kill? Also, Logan, aka Wolverine, knows Cyclops really well, and knows that he would have a different opinion of what to do with the Phoenix Force. So clearly, the Avengers wanted to make sure that everything is contained, and that the Phoenix is dispelled, but Cyclops had other plans. Which brings us back to Utopia, where he and his team are talking about what they should do with Hope and the Phoenix. Cyclops is leading this discussion, and what he has to say is pretty blunt. He is obsessed with the mutants coming back stronger than ever since a lot of mutant powers were taken away because of Wanda Maximoff's famous line, no more mutants. Cyclops wants to make sure that mutants don't go extinct. Not only that, but it almost seems as if he wants the mutants to come out on top. Stronger than the Avengers, stronger than any other team, stronger than the Scarlet Witch. While they are having this discussion at Utopia, Captain America shows up and talks with Cyclops about how himself and the Avengers need to take Hope in and have the Avengers protect her from the Phoenix Force. But Cyclops is not having it at all, and lets Cap know that he thinks Hope is the mutant's last best hope to return as a strong force on Earth. Cyclops' team knows that Cap is not leaving the island without Hope, and Cyclops won't let that happen, so Cyclops ends up blasting Captain America when Cap says he wasn't asking to take Hope. Then Captain America says his famous line, Avengers assemble, and man do they assemble from a helicarrier that is carrying a ton of Avengers, as well as Wolverine among their ranks, and this is where the battle begins. But before the fight breaks out, the X-Men ask Cyclops if he's sure about fighting with the Avengers, and needless to say, since this is the story of the Avengers versus the X-Men, Cyclops is sure. So the X-Men make the first strike. Colossus flies into the Hell Carrier with the help of Magneto and causes major damage. Red Hulk fights with Colossus and brings the fight to the ground and over the water. This is an all-out brawl between the most powerful superheroes in the Marvel Universe, and I'm glad we got to see this in action. And I hope it goes to the big screen one day. The two teams go head-to-head -head and so many different powers are shown all in one battle. Hope is with the younger mutants during this battle and wants to contribute since she is the reason behind the commotion, but Emma Frost doesn't let her, and then she goes out to fight for herself, but is interrupted by Iron Man, who is interrupted by Magneto, and then ends up fighting Quicksilver. So yeah, as you can see here, a lot of superheroes fighting different superheroes all at the same time essentially. Since Wolverine is fighting with the Avengers, he is dubbed a traitor by the X-Men. In his defense, he is just trying to save the damn world, as he says. He goes through a tunnel at the other side of the island to try and reach Hope with Spider-Man, while everyone is still fighting. When they get to Hope, they see that she has taken out the other mutants that were with her, and then fries Wolverine with the Phoenix Force as he tries to go for her. Cap and Cyclops both get there as well, but by that time, Hope is gone. 
When Wolverine wakes up, Spider-Man tells him that Cyclops and the X-Men gave up. This doesn't really sit right with Logan though since he knows Cyclops very well and goes to confront him. Before he meets him, Tony and Steve are discussing what to do with the X-Men. Cap wants to basically imprison them and Iron Man is thinking that that's not going to work at all. When Wolverine arrives, he sees that Magic was actually the one who took out Doctor Strange and this advantage helped them escape. So now the X-Men and the Avengers are on a manhunt for hope. Both parties want to use the Cerebra to find hope, but the house is loyal to the X-Men and not the Avengers, which includes Wolverine at the moment. However, Cap ends up turning on Wolverine because he doesn't want him killing Hope and going on his own, so Logan ends up getting kicked off the plane. Now, at this point in the story, the X-Men and the Avengers are scattered throughout the Earth and even has a team of the Avengers trying to go stop the Phoenix Force in space. But Wolverine ends up in Antarctica, where Hope finds him and tells him to just listen for a minute. And to help buy her that minute, she speaks his language. She gives him a beer. She tells him that she wants to control the Phoenix Force for the good of the mutants, so basically what Cyclops wants, but the catch is, if she can't control it, she wants Wolverine to kill her, since he is the only one who she can trust with that task. And Wolverine accepts her offer. The X-Men and the Avengers encounter each other on Wakanda, Tabula Rasa, Latveria, Wundagore Mountain, and more. Meanwhile, Iron Man is building a Phoenix Killer in hopes of putting all of this to an end. Wolverine and Hope end up getting a spaceship to get them to the blue area of the moon. They arrive, but only to find out that the Avengers are there waiting for her. Wolverine has crossed Hope because he needed to get her off Earth, and he knows she isn't over her head. But then surprise, of course the X-Men show up as well and are ready to battle for Hope. But before they even start, Thor comes crashing down and points up while Hope says, it's here. They still try and fight each other, but Hope sends out a blast of the Phoenix Force stopping them in their tracks, and this is where Hope realizes the Phoenix is too strong for her and asks Wolverine to please do what he said he was going to do, which is kill her. Cyclops stops Wolverine and they all go back to fighting each other, but Iron Man goes to try and kill the Phoenix with his machine, and this actually makes the Phoenix possess five of the X-Men, thus branding them as the Phoenix Five. The five head back to Earth wanting to change it, and they will. They remake the world and make it better, but that doesn't last. The Avengers try to get hope again because they know that the Phoenix Five have too much power and it's only a matter of time before it ends badly, so they try and get hope again and they succeed this time. The Five officially go off the deep end and start destroying everything, like Namor destroying Wakanda. He does this with a giant tidal wave that I actually think we're going to be seeing in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. But they're able to defeat him with the help of Wanda, the Scarlet Witch. But when they do, everyone realizes that when one of them falls, their energy and power is transferred to the ones remaining. It eventually comes down to Cyclops and Emma Frost because Spider-Man was able to take out Colossus and Magic by getting them to fight each other. Good ol' Spidey. Most of the superheroes were taken to Kun Lun, where Hope was training with Lee Kung, and the team could heal from the battles with the Five. But after Spider-Man takes Colossus and Magic down, Cyclops shows up to Kun Lun to take Hope once again, but they use the power of Shao Lao to hold him off. Cyclops is launched to the moon with the attack, and has had enough. He goes back to Emma, and they discuss about whether or not one of them will take each other's powers. But then Cyclops feels Professor Xavier and approaches him. While they are talking, the Avengers and the X-Men team up to try and stop Cyclops, but Emma shows up as well. After fighting, Cyclops takes Emma's Phoenix Force and kills Professor Xavier. Then Wanda and Hope show up and finally stop him with their combined power. But wait, there's more. Hope became the actual Phoenix, but flies across the Earth and puts out all of the fires the five have caused. Hope then goes on to say what she is now and how she will be the best Phoenix. However, Wanda approaches her and convinces Hope's soul that she does not belong with the Phoenix's power. And she was the one to actually destroy it, not control it. And that's what they do together. They put an end to all of this by uttering together, no more Phoenix. Also, while they ended the Phoenix all across the world, mutants gained their powers back. So in the end, it was actually a good force for the mutants. So there you have it, a complete story, summarized at least, of the Avengers vs. X-Men 2012 story. This is one of my personal favorite stories and I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want more content like this. And of course, as always, thanks for stopping by the channel.